hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Our topic for conversation today is timing. We're going to talk about timing. Oof, there's many different aspects of this topic that we could focus on. We could talk about timing as in rhythm, as in connection or intersection points. We could talk about timing as far as missed opportunities. We could also talk about timing in regards to how things fit together. How are they in sync? How do they line up? So I'm going to fill in, actually. I, I think this topic is a good one. And it kind of ins was inspired to me in a conversation I was having with a friend the other day and a reference to timelines, like this lifetime or past lifetimes or future lifetimes, that kind of a thing. And the sense of time and how it feels different when we're at different points in our lives. So let's talk about timing. I'm going to feel into, oh, my awesome spiritual helpers and support team and have them help me to have a conversation with you about timing. The first thing that comes through is actually a thought. Timing is everything. Well, is it? Is timing really everything? Is that true? Is there some grand plan or overlay that covers all aspects of our lives that really impacts whether we do or don't, who we meet or don't meet, what we become or don't become, what we experience or don't experience, how we're saved from tragedy or how we receive victories and triumphs just because of this mystical thing of timing? Is that a universal truth? Is there a map? And if so, why can we not see it? And do we have control or influence over this thing, timing? So I sense the energy of Archangel Michael, who is one of my lead guides, and he brings in for me always a layer of protection. If I ever work with you in a private session, you know, you will sense Archangel Michael. He is my right hand. Actually, he's on my left side usually. It's kind of funny. He's on my left side usually and just kind of stand stoic and quiet to help me allow my energy to feel grounded and rooted if I need to or if I feel distracted by outside influences, whether it be my own thoughts, my kids, my, my human life, or whether it be spiritual, too much chatter in the field. Michael will help to quiet things down and provide a layer of very strong and solid protection for me. So I will feel safe in doing my work, steady, balanced. And when it comes to the vibration of the timing, he reminds me of what a stickler I am, how stubborn I am about time. I am so very stubborn about time at times. And yet, in other times, during other things or other experiences, I am very much, uh, let's just say, more laid back. <laughs> so, for example, when I'm on vacation, depending upon my intention or what my goals are for the day or for the week or for the experience, vacation as a whole, timing, my perception of timing can be very different. I can have specific things, exact times, reservations, et cetera, that I need to places I need to be, or I can have expectations that I have created goals or intentions that I've set to be able to experience certain things, which then I am having to make sure that I line up with timing based upon those things or experiences, like the hours of operation when they're open, et cetera, right? So very real stuff we have to navigate related to time. And yet, that said, time is also this incredible, precious commodity. It has so much value because we waste time. And it doesn't seem as though we earn time very often. And yet we are constantly trading away our time. 
sometimes it's our thoughts, our own thoughts about situations, circumstances, or people that steal our time away from us, where we have a loss, a, a debt of time loss. And once we realize, for example, if you spend too much time on a social media feed, and all of a sudden it's an hour later and you realize you've done nothing but scroll through your social media feed, you will have this sort of angst about it potentially or a grief about the loss of the time, this awareness of that. And so then with that comes this idea or this thought that, well, time can be intentional. We can use it as this incredibly powerful tool to provide a rhythm to our lives which we do, but we also know that we have to integrate that rhythm into the rhythms of others if we want to have, if we want to have shared experiences. So in that case, the shared experiences and the rhythm of, of each other with each other, those are where the timing is everything comes in. But it's really not everything because what I'm also seeing is an infinity symbol, an infinity sign, which means that there are multiple possibilities when it comes to timing. So if something doesn't work out, it's not like this romantic gesture of there we're like two ships passing in the night that might have made for a fabulous movie back in the day. But the truth is, is that there is multiple opportunities for rhythm, for cycles, for shifting that allows multitudes of intersection points regarding timing. So it's not just a one and done thing. Timing is not about all or nothing. It's not. There is not that faded sort of energy like this is fate. It's all or nothing. The timing works or it doesn't work. It's not an off or on or a right or a wrong. It is much more fluid. So timing, while it is extremely important, it is not something we control. It is something we move with. It is very fluid, it is very rhythmic, and if we can be rhythmic in our intentions and our goals and allow for the opportunity of the goal setting with the mind and the intention setting with the heart and the spirit to really collaborate and work together, life becomes much more harmonious and the concept of timing becomes something in our favor, not something we're working against or a structure we dislike or something we just have to deal with, not an overlay, it does become a, a sort of an outline for us that we can use to our advantage for our greatest good as individuals and collectively in communities, in organizations, in groups, in society. It's, it can be a beautiful harmonizing of energy, of multiple patterns and rhythms that work together that create a broader, more robust experience for all of us. This is what life is about. So yes, while timing is important to be aware of, because we do want to make sure that we recognize the, the part of it that has such a value, has such a, almost like a compensation element and a, a worthy component, that time isn't something to be just wasted or thrown away or, or trivialized, but it is also not supposed to, it's very, very valuable, it's very precious, but it is also not supposed to be overused to our detriment to control and confine and create stress and create pressure and create compliance. Time is not about compliance. It is about collaboration coherence, resonance. It's about the rhythms. Recognize time as a fluid piece of energy that is moving about. And we are part of that fluidity, of those movements, very much so. Very, very much so. Do you, does that feel true to you? Are you one of those people that ha really struggles with this whole concept of time? Now, I have, in my, my life, I have some struggles with time. I feel 
I have this fear of being late, for example. I don't want to be, I don't want to be late. And that stems from a very specific experience I had when I was in literally in kindergarten where I was scolded for being late to school, which, and it had, there was no, it was to no fault of my own. My parents had to drive me to school. So after I was late several times, I was scolded and, you know, called up in front of the class at age five and, you know, scolded about how I needed to be on time. And it was very embarrassing. And I cried and I remember these things. And so time to me became something that was a bit of a stickler, a authority figure that I had to please and to make sure I didn't upset because if I did, it would cause me some pain. So this experience with timing or time, specifically with being late for something, has really impacted me over the course of my life. And it's something that I've been working on in the last, gosh, eight, 10 years, specifically to not be so worried. Like, so what if we're late? Big deal. It happens. People are late. Things, unexpected things happen. We don't have control over everybody else and all the things like the weather and the car and the traffic and all of the things we don't have control over. So we have to release the expectations. And like for me, my past experiences with time and be open to the energy of grace when it comes to timing and to recognize that not right now doesn't mean never. Not right now doesn't mean no. Being late doesn't mean bad. It just means it didn't work out exactly as planned. And sometimes when things don't work out exactly as planned, it's an opportunity for us to have grace, to forgive ourselves, to recognize that there is so much more to life than just being on time for something. Like tending to the relationships. Like that. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for listening to this conversation, Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget, about time. I hope I've inspired your spirit today, got you thinking a little bit, filled you with some hope, and encouraged you to live your life. This is your life, after all, and you got to live it. Just live it. Thanks for listening.